Hello, this is Charlene Campbell with Call on the Midwife. And I'm back here for a live broadcast with you. I hope you're well. It's been about five or six months and I've been working on some important projects. I'm gonna share with you one that's almost done. I'll just give you a sneak peek of it right now. And that's the DVD companion to my um, manual that I have for labor and delivery training for the low resource and emergency situations. So I'm excited about my new cover and um, I'm gonna share a little bit about that. Later. But I'm back here. How's everybody doing? Um, it's been a good few months of me just getting organized and um, re, re kind of planning my, my life, kind of what I want to do, <laughs> getting clear about my goals and my plans. And my husband is at his son's wedding this weekend. So I'm here with no one else here. So it's nice and quiet. I've been enjoying the quiet. I hope you're well. And um, I've got a nice schedule of things here that probably take us at least an hour or even could take us a couple of hours. I don't know. I just had the strong impression by the Holy Spirit to get back on making videos. And so here I am. Hope you're all well and that you enjoy this, um, this video that we're going to work with today. It's going to be... Um, starting with the scripture because I have one of the things I've decided is with all this stuff about people being um, you know lacking in freedom of speech and whatnot I realized as much as I can I'm going to be as open and honest with you about what I really believe. so today I just let the book fall open I like to and then just let the spirit guide and it fell to Galatians and I thought with so much unrest, civil unrest, and so many factions of either religious groups or other people, you know, kind of fighting and warring, political people fighting and warring against each other and finding um, rifts and barriers to communication and peace. I thought um, this was really timely. <laughs> I just flipped it open. And um, so here it is. It's Galatians uh, 5. 22 to 26 and if you just joined me live i see there's somebody here welcome <laughs> please um, relax and enjoy if you want to take um, some paper i will probably be going through some points that you might want to jot down notes later on if you're a mother or a father giving birth or planning to give birth it would be a good class for you um, or if you are um a person that plans to help other people when times are tough and there's displaced people around from either disasters or political unrest or civil unrest, um, then you can create a, a first aid station that includes responding to unexpected childbirth. And that's my goal here is to help people prepare for that. So here I am, Colin the midwife. And here's the scripture I went to, it just opened up and I have it I marked and highlighted too. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. That's the one that really caught my eye. And then this next one, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I, I think it's really interesting the visions I see among, amongst people online. I think, you know, we have a lot more in common than we really believe. And especially when things get hard and women are having babies and need our support, we need to not be judging them for their religion, for their beliefs, for what political party they belong to, or if they think 
differently on certain, you know, current topics. I mean, those things have to be let go when you're helping someone have a baby and and just really totally be there for that woman and not be judging anything to do with what she believes. And I think that's really, really paramount right now is that we don't jump on bandwagons of hate, you know, towards each other. Okay, I wanted to show you some really nice stones today. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing really, really well. I, I enjoyed my break. I think I had about a six month break. <laughs> and uh, I got my whole house organized and um, streamlined and I, I got my project done, my, my DVD redone. To my new stones. I can't tell you what these stones are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could remember the names of them. But um, I find it very soothing. This is quite heavy. It's, it's, it's pretty though, isn't it? And this one is nice and soft. It reminds me of kind of like how you need to be like having the soft front and maybe a strong, of course, a strong back. When you're in labor, you have to be kind of like a, a warrior mama and then you also have to have that gentle feminine that energy. So today I'm going to go through some affirmations for us to help us to be able to e either regain that um, soft heart if we've had trauma or if we've been hurt, then we can release those things. We can alchemize that into joy and peace and acceptance and understanding, but we can still have that firm resolve to stand in our sovereign authority as we deliver our baby. Okay, I'm gonna go with my list. So our next thing is our affirmations, which I have a clipboard here with a few that I really like. Yes, here it is. Uh, well, first the P words that I really like, okay? And um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is making bread. <laughs> And that is something that helps you to pace. It, it's just because you have to wait for it to rise. You have to, um, you know, you have to be patient to make bread. And it also takes time to knead it. And I just love the whole process of making bread. So here's some of the words that go with the P. Presence, peace, perspective. And I'm going to say about perspective is our perspective is a thing. And we can choose our perspective. If we're feeling like upset or angry or sad or neglected or anything like that, we can just shift it and turn it into whatever we want. <laughs> well, you know, that's based on truth, but also give us the understanding that it's for our experience. But everything we do is for our experience. And especially in labor, um, you know, it's a rite of passage to go through labor. And it's not easy to be in labor. Um, but it can be really beautiful. And to feel those hormones, I have had really uninterrupted deliveries for the most part. I would say one of them, because it was a cesarean, was, not, was very heavily interrupted. Um, that was my second baby. But of five, the first one and the, the, the three ones after the cesarean were what I would call uninterrupted labor, uninterrupted birth, uninterrupted postpartum period. So then you have the full experience of the hormones of, um, I hope you can see me okay. <laughs> I've been doing this now for a while, so it's been... It's, it's kind of fun to get back at it again. Hope you're well. Here's one of my stones. Believe no matter what's happening in your life. Stay strong and believe. I've had a couple of people pop on. And it looks like they pop off again, but I don't know if you're actually here or not. I can't really tell. But if you are, welcome to Call in the Midwife. I've got a really nice program ready for us today. I hope you're doing really well. Um, and if you're not, this should help because <laughs> I'm going to do some great affirmations and positive, uplifting stuff. One thing I want to do, too, is just say, Heavenly Father, please bless all the people in the world that we will have peace, that we will be able to have world peace. 
I just watched the movie Miss Congeniality One. <laughs> it was really it was a funny movie. And and it's and all the women on this scholarship program or beauty pageant, whatever you want to call it, um, they all say their their main thing that they want is world peace. I thought, you know what? I want world peace too. Because, you know, we are moving into the millennium. Jesus Christ will be reigning for a thousand years on the earth. And so we are going to come to world peace. So just have to be patient. I would like it if you could see this. So maybe I'm just going to put it right here so you can. Okay. Here we go. We're going to do some more affirmations. All right. Well, one thing... This is one of my affirmations. Embrace only truth and be an empty vessel for Christ to use. So when we when we clear out all the negativity that's accrued from trauma or from, um, you know, whatever it is, we can, maybe people hurting us sometimes, that can cause trauma or our own issues, health issues, all different things can cause trauma. And so when we clear it out, we can be more prepared for labor. We can be more prepared to help other people in labor. If we're not holding on to anything from the past, we've just, we've just said everything that we've ever gone through is purposeful and is exactly what we needed to pass through. And now we're going to move on and be a complete open vessel for this birth to go forward. Okay. It does help. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm letting go. <laughs> I feel like it helps to go out in nature. It helps to um, have routine. It helps to um, do what I do is uh, kind of like a Pilates floor work routine, has pelvic floor focus. It's very, very good for pregnancy and postpartum and any age, any age of woman. I do it with um, Prudence Todd out of New Zealand and she's live on Facebook with it. So that's how I do it. And it's really powerful. Uh, once I'm really skilled at it, I'm going to, you know, hopefully show you some of the things I'm learning. Okay. So here's a couple that I like to say, okay. I come from a positive place. I honor myself by staying in divine, in my divine feminine heart and solar plexus. All right. I forgive myself. Yes, I forgive myself. I forgive everyone, and I forgive myself. It doesn't mean you condone the behavior. It doesn't mean you have to stay with the person. It doesn't mean you agree with what they did. It's for you to let go, to move forward with your life. I am truly loving, kind, forgiving, and joyful. Who I am is beautiful, loving, good natured, and I set healthy boundaries easily. I think reprogramming your brain, because when we're ch children who have uh, like been traumatized, which increases our risk of being in narcissistic relationships or relationships with people that are not going to treat us the way God wants us to be treated. We have to reprogram our minds that we have a worthiness in us. I think that goes for childbirth too, you know, knowing you deserve to be respected and honored and validated and valued and that your opinion matters in labor, in pregnancy, and in the postpartum period. And as you advocate for your child, if your child has any kind of interaction with the medical system, you have to be really strong to stand up for your child. And, and especially if you don't want your child to be taking in substances into their body that you're not comfortable with. And that's something that's coming up right now a lot. Children are being targeted now. And so it's, it's just vital to uh, defend family against some things. And to, have a, to be able to do that, you really have to believe in yourself. You have to have a strong foundation. And if you've been um, fed a lot of negativity or uh, you just ha don't have a high self-worth or self-confidence in yourself, which, I mean, I've had that myself, so I know. 
Um, you, you have to reprogram yourself is what it is. And for birth too, if you have like negative birth um, experience or you've watched a lot of negative birth movies or shows or um, heard stories, those are part of your kind of your information. And so it's like a pendulum or like a scales balance. If you've had all this negativity, you want to put a bunch of stuff over here on this positive positive side and get it balanced, okay? And more heavier on the pot, okay? Here we go. I don't know if anybody's here right now, but no worries. I don't mind doing it with nobody here. And thank you for joining me later. If, if you are, I appreciate you coming on and bless your day and bless you, your life right now, okay? Okay, so... Um, I am truly loving, kind, forgiving, and joyful. Who I am is beautiful, loving, good-natured, and I set healthy boundaries easily. I remember who I am. I am a daughter of my mother and father in heaven. I am true to my values. I speak only truth, love, light, and peace. Okay, that's good. Very good. Now, I'm going to do a couple of um, healing questions because they can be really good to help release some of our um, unconscious beliefs that inhibit us from reaching our full potential and filling the measure of the creation God made us for. So maybe we all fulfill that measure of creation. Here's another one that I've read before, but I'm going to just read it again. I am a good mother. My body will find the perfect position for birth. I love my baby. My baby loves me. Contractions, waves help bring my baby to me. My baby senses the peace that I feel. I am surrounded by those who love and respect me. I trust my body. My cervix is opening like a flower at the perfect time for me and my baby. When my baby is ready and when I am ready. I am strong and my baby is healthy. Okay. Now I'm going to do a couple of questions and then a couple of words. And then those are going to be our affirmations. We're at seven minutes. This probably is going to be long. So I'm going to keep with my plan. Hope you're well. All right. Others are free from needing to love me my way. I am free to receive love from the inexhaustible fountain of love from within. I am accepted just the way I am. And we can also incorporate these in our prayers. I think, you know, incorporating positive statements in our prayers with God is good too. I apply self-patience and kindness to my weaknesses. I am the authority in my life and I choose to live in the present, in the present moment. I see my part in how things are playing out. Okay, what will it take to find the words and strength to safely communicate my emotions? These are a few questions, okay? What will it take for me to tap into the endless source of love without expecting anyone else to change? What will it take to trust everything will work out? What will it take to trust I can make good decisions? Okay, I think that's good. We're going to do a couple words now. This is my little thing I made up with my friend Heidi. I just say the words and I ask them to be infused by the power of Jesus Christ and through Mother in Heaven and Father in Heaven and their healing power. Love, protection, deep joy, assertiveness, discernment of spirits, discernment of truth, discernment of intentions, trust, confidence, understanding. Knowing God's will, faith, vibrant health, gratitude, 
recognizing my divine nature, integrity, honesty, virtue, charity, wholeness through Christ, consideration of others, consideration of my own health and well-being, clarity of mind, clarity of heart, abundance, strength, meekness, that also includes strong confidence in yourself and worthiness, a feeling of worthiness, compassion, courage, empathy, humility, determination, success, prosperity, peace, calmness, mercy, being merciful to others, understanding, patience, purity of heart, decisiveness, and a forgiving heart. Okay, that's good. We've done our affirmations, and our healing statements. I just want to show you a really nice picture. I have this set of um, pictures that I really like. This is this is called Our Lady of Great Power, but it shows a divine mother in heaven who's holding her dying son. And just, you know, you can see all the sim symbolic uh, colors and shapes the divine cloak, the you know, the divine Madonna cloak. And it's true that you do have an energy cloak over you and your baby. And that's why right after you have your baby, the first three months can be termed the fourth trimester. And it is part of some cultures to keep the baby always within the Madonna cloak, if possible. So you don't separate mother and baby. Okay, now my song. I'm going to do a song for you. First, I'll take a drink and ring our bell. i show you my favorite picture. Well, not my very, very favorite, but one of my very favorites. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Master and Lord. I love him. And he's always with me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a little bell before we do song. Ready? Here we go. May peace fill your heart. May peace fill your life. May peace fill your soul today. In Jesus' name. Okay, there we go. I'm going to sing a song for you, which I just opened this book randomly. I did the same thing. Everybody's here, so it's okay. I did the same thing as I did with the um, the scriptures. I just pulled it out and I said, I'm going to just let it fall open, you know, wherever it falls, and wherever it falls, that's what I'm gonna sing. So it fell to sacred rounds and chants, and it fell to the page where this song that I used to sing when I was a little girl in the Catholic church with my mom and my dad and my eight siblings. I really loved it. It was really beautiful, a lot of the things that we did, the singing and whatnot. Okay, I gotta clear my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. So you pictured when I used to, uh, I worked in Jamaica. And I did a, well, I was already a practicing midway for 15 years when I went there. I just did it to get extra experience for my master's, the bachelor's degree, because I was an apprentice trained midwife originally. Okay, so now we are going to sing. It's called Peace is Flowing Like a River, and I haven't sung this for a long time, but uh, when I was a little girl, I sung it. So I hope it brings you peace in your heart. I hope you enjoy this. Okay. Peace is flowing like a river flowing out of you and me. His peace 
voices flowing to the desert, setting all the captives free. His love is flowing like a of you and me. His love is flowing like a river, setting all the captives free. It's <laughs> a simple song. But you can make it into kind of where people can sing it over and over and over again. Okay, that's our song. That felt good to sing to you. Enjoy that. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to read just a couple of um, little uh, affirmation words on my trust birth poster here. It says, release the tension. Trust the process. Breathe. Let go of fear. Be present. Sing. Moan. Dance. These are all things you can do in labor, okay? Or when you're having emotion that's strong and uncomfortable and you need to shift the energy. Um, open your heart. Imagine. Transcend self-doubt. Transcend self-doubt, yes. Um, embrace the experience. Hug and feel deeply. I was just listening to something that said emotional intelligence, one way that emotional intelligence is measured is by how many emotions you could describe or how articulate you are about describing in detail and the nuances of your emotions. And I think they there's something like a hundred and 50 emotions or something, you know, but some people only have like maybe a really limited vocabulary to describe how they're feeling. So that's an, a barrier to emotional intelligence. And also another thing that is a sign of emotional intelligence is using your being able to read other people's facial expressions and being able to also use your own face there's 43 muscles in your face. And so when we can read other people's facial expressions, we can really understand what they're saying a lot more. I think that is the barrier with um, texting. I know from, from having that my own in my own life where I had a real barrier to communication that where I didn't see the person's face after, uh, yeah, I couldn't quite understand sometimes what they were saying to me on a text. And so I think um, going back to face-to-face -to -face <laughs> interactions with people is also very good, if you can. As much as possible, having people actually in your room, not just doing everything on internet. Okay, we've done our song. Now I wanna show you a special book that I want to just sort of feature today. Um, it is called Seattle Women, A Legacy of Community De Development by Mildred Andrews. Okay, this thing is amazing. It really is. It shows you what people did during the Depression in Seattle. There were, I mean, it was difficult, difficult times in Seattle during the Depression. Um, there were a lot of, pro there was a lot of prostitution. It was between eight. 51 and 1920 this this was these pictures were taken okay it's a pictorial history now what they basically did was a lot of well specific people who were really quite amazing i want to be one of those people i hope you do too <laughs> they were so well prepared that they took in um, the pregnant women, they didn't discriminate against them. If they were practicing prostitution, they didn't judge them. They didn't discriminate against them. 
they treated them like everybody else. And I think that's a really, really says a lot about that. I just get tingles. And they, they would have been out on the street because nobody else would even take them into their hospitals. No doctors would even take them because they were shunned and just basically um, abandoned by the tribe, by their tribe for fulfilling a role that they were fulfilling probably a lot of the same people that were persecuting them were actually using them. <laughs> it's pretty sad. Okay. There's, there's a place. It looks like a, um, a bunch of beds in someone's, it was a large house that she had. She had a very, very large house and she would take in women and she would, um, she would work with them. She would teach them. She would, this is a picture of her house here. This book is kind of falling apart actually, but here's a picture of the women in the house that they worked in. And they were tireless in their work because it was during the depression. I mean, they had to work for everything that they, that they did and they received, um, many, many, many people in and supported them to get the care that they needed when they otherwise would not have gotten it. So that's a really great book. If you want to check it out, it's got some great pictures. In it. All right. I'm going to keep going down our list. Key points to remember for normal labor. This is from manual. Let me grab it here. There it is right here. Okay, key points to remember. This is what we're going to do now. This is the manual, which has been re-covered. It has a new cover now. This is the cover. And I've got the DVD ready. And we're shrinking the manual down. And we're putting it inside the DVD. So you, when you order it, you'll have like this little mini manual inside the DVD as well. Really excited about that. <laughs> Thanks to my husband, Kevin and Alan for helping with that major project. And it's finally almost done. <laughs> so I'm very excited. All right, so here we are. Here's just like a kind of like a nutshell version of key points, okay? Number one, skin to skin contact after birth between mother and baby, yes, skin to skin. Stay calm, centered, and grounded, and in tune with the spirit. Keep the cord intact. It's safer for mommy and baby, and the baby needs that blood, okay? Postural drainage for newborn. You can see on here, this is what this is. This is a picture of my friend Pamela Wells doing postural drainage at one of my classes with the BYU nursing students there. And you can see how she's holding the baby. And I'll just give you a little demo of that so you can see really well. You're basically, I got to move my chair back. Over maybe. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> so you're, you're going to hold the baby like this, okay? Yeah, you're going to hold the baby like this. Down with the chin like this. Okay. You're going to go one, two, usually two, three maybe will help. And then you can flip the baby over, check if the, if the baby's breathing. Then maybe you might need to do a couple more there. And that, and then you can take a little cloth. Let's see if I can go in here. And here's a cloth right here. You take a little cloth and you're going to wipe off the baby's face. Okay, that's after you've done that because oftentimes they'll spit up a little bit of mucus here, right? So you just wipe that off. And then usually they'll be breathing by then. Okay? So that's just a little demonstration of postural drainage if the baby's mucusy and not breathing really well. Babies take 30 to 60 seconds to transition in room air. They're still getting oxygen from the court. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue our list. For shoulder dystocia or sh sticky shoulders, 
change positions. Like that's probably one of the easiest things you can do. It's, I would say, put her into a standing. If you've got three people there, one person to catch. Oh, there's a fellow right outside my window. Catching the air, catching the, the wind. <laughs> okay, if if you um, like, if you can, there's different positions. Okay, but get you um, like if you can, there's different positions. Okay, but getting her up with one person on one side, another person on the other side, and they're holding her tight, and she's not going to fall. Then she can let her body hang and go into a supported standing squat with one person catching and one person on each side. That's if you have three people. One person could also be behind her, holding her with her arms like this, and she lays back and hangs, okay? That's another way to get the baby out because gravity really helps, okay? All righty. This is a book we're reading out of um, that um, Val Hall, who's a midwife, for Generations Home Birth in Idaho Falls. If you need a midwife and you're in Rexburg, call Generations Home Birth, Home Birth, Valerie Hall. It's a great group of midwives. There's about three or four midwives in their group and they're all over from Ashton through to Pocatello. So anywhere in that whole area, you could be served by them. Excellent group of midwives, okay? Now, um, so change positions because position change can almost always just move things. And I go through a lot more detail in this book about a bunch of different positions that you can use. So, you know, there's all different ones that you can use. And sometimes you can do like a running start, a squat, and you do all these different positions and you just keep moving until the baby comes. Okay. You know, you do one contraction in each one and you push with contraction. And you need to simulate contractions if they're not coming quickly with a, shoulder, a sticky shoulder. So nipple stimulation can be really helpful. Sometimes um, moving the mom can also help stimulate contractions, especially if she's in the tub. I suggest you get her out of the tub if she's having any kind of stickiness with the head. Just the, the act of actually rotating your legs over the tub and getting out that way will actually oftentimes just move the baby and because the pelvic remember this the pelvis is a bunch of bones that are all attached by cartilage that loosens in the last few weeks of pregnancy and so this is a mobile unit it doesn't feel like it here but this moves all these muscles are mobile so they stretch they open they they move and also the baby's head is navigating with the bones overlapping all these bones that I've marked out here, you can see where the baby's bones are. These bones will overlap during labor to accommodate for the baby's birth. Okay. Sometimes it can take time. That's why you don't want to rush a birth. Just give it time. It'll come. Baby will come. Okay. Hope you're well. It's Charlene Campbell with Colin the Midwife. My first uh, program I've done on YouTube here for about five or six months now while I've been working on other projects, getting my house streamlined and organized and working on other plans and projects for the future that I'm excited about to fulfill my mission and my purpose. <laughs> so it's been really good to take a little break, but I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you're getting something out of it. All right. Mother begins showing signs of shock. Help her lay down. Help her into lying down position and help her stay present. Help her stay conscious, but put her in a, in a horizontal position. Always if a mother's bleeding or in shock, she should be flat on her back. Um, yes. We used to elevate the legs, but they say no. No, you don't need to do that. That's That's kind of not part of the protocol anymore. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Cord around the neck, somersault baby by at vaginal opening. So at the introitus, you're gonna take the baby. I've gone over this in other videos and you can go back and look, okay? 
but it's just if the cord's wrapped around the neck, you're going to take the baby. And when the baby comes out, you're going to keep the head right near the enteritis or the vulva or the vagina or the yoni, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Many names, <laughs> matrix. <laughs> um, and, and that way you can just unwrap the baby at the enteritis without pulling too much on the cord or too much pressure on the baby. Okay. Now, keep on going. These are just the main tips, and I think it's good. These are really good tips. Okay. Or key points, rather, is what they are. If baby is not breathing, give five slow breaths over the newborn's mouth and nose. Okay? Over the newborn's mouth and nose. And those are just small breaths. The lungs are about that big. So just what you have in your cheeks. Watch for rise and fall with breaths of the chest. Okay. And then the next one is keep fluids and foods available for mother, especially after the birth to rehydrate and give nutritional support for breastfeeding. Women need more calories. They need denser calories. Make sure they're um, prioritized if you are making a place of refuge or a emergency um, first aid station, which I have a big handout on that. I'm going to talk about that another day. Um, but if you, uh, or talk about it more another day, I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. But one of the things that you can do is to be ready for moms when they come in that you can help them. You know, uh, if they're either displaced in their communities or for whatever reason they need support. But they should be prioritized. If they're pregnant or postpartum, they should be prioritized for extra calories and extra food if you're rationing food, which I'm sure we'll be coming into that with the famine that's now upon us. It's going to be starting this fall. That uh, I know that. <laughs> So I hope you'll take it seriously what I'm telling you here um, and prepare your home to be a place of refuge for others. That's how we can serve Jesus Christ and his 144,000 gathering the most is by helping and showing charity to the children of God on the earth who are suffering, especially the mothers and babies, families. Okay, so keep fluids and foods available and prioritized for mother and baby, or for mother, because she's making the food for the baby. Limited supplies, you should gather whatever you can and be creative. Usually you want to gather something that's absorbent for the mother if she's, uh, she, you know, to absorb the fluids. It could be even a t-shirt or, you know, a coat or sweatshirts or towels or sheets or Anything linens that you can find, okay? Clean, preferably. Mother, if mother begins to hemorrhage, you can use a tiny little sliver of the placenta in her cheek, which is a uh, has the oxytocin and can help her stop bleeding really quickly. Okay, there we go. Those are our key points. Great. Now, what's next on our list? Um... I've already showed you my DVD. This will be available um, through midwiferytoday.com for anybody who's interested, but it's not available yet, not until I get the insert, which is going to be um, put in right in here in the si same size as the DVD, okay? It's going to be really convenient. I just wanted to show you this really neat picture. It's kind of neat, eh? Got lots to look forward to. Okay, tips for laid back breastfeeding. I want to just give you a few tips for laid back breastfeeding, okay? Because I talked to my dear friend uh, who's in Mexico right now, and uh, she hadn't heard about laid back breastfeeding, but she's due to have her baby. And so I talked to her about it. I've seen over the last 40 years, I've seen a lot of moms with breastfeeding issues. Now, not so much though over the past, you know, 10 years because we did laid back breastfeeding and um, Valerie Halls really testifies of this also. 
is that the laid back breastfeeding is when you lay the mother on her back, you lay the baby between her like this. You know, you have the baby right there. And you allow the baby to kind of find the breast. The mom can help a little bit, but you don't kind of go like this and have her sitting up and doing all this. That causes latch issues. Babies will imprint better. They will have better breastfeeding relationships going forward. And they won't have as many latch issues unless they have a tongue tie, you know. I think always checking babies for tongue tie and having a good physician or nurse practitioner or a midwife who can recognize a tongue tie and get it help, help you with it right away so it's not impeding your breastfeeding. Okay, that's about laid back breastfeeding. Now, I just want to go over a little bit today about setting up a place of, uh, I mean, a first aid station or a place of refuge, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, I like the idea of first aid station because it's kind of like not as um, intimidating, I think, to some people that to hear that. You know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it could be people traveling through, maybe they're refugees going from somewhere that's just been either bombed or um, earthquaked or flooded or whatever, and they're traveling to their destination. But in the meantime, they need to come by your place. And I think a soup kitchen is a really good thing to do. I've been saving food and supplies to do a soup kitchen for a lot of years. And so I know one day I will. So this is a list I put together. It's it's based on a list from Robin Lim from Bumi Sea Hut, who has clinics all over the world, but her main one is in Bumi Sea Hut where she does these first aid stations, but really they're places of refuge. They're birthing centers, like full-fledged full birthing centers that are natural. So what I did was I added some things to this. This is her pod that she sends out. Now this is what they would go to anywhere that had like a disaster. And they bring all these supplies with them, plus their personnel. They set it up right on site, wherever it is. She's done this multiple, multiple times with, you know, major disasters. Okay, she's really amazing. Robin Lim, you can look her up and donate to her if you have, you know. You can also donate to me. I'm collecting all these items, okay, because we're going to need them here, too. We are. Three tents. This is what each one has in it. I can't read the whole list today. I'm just going to read part of it today, and then I'll continue it on my next video, okay? Three tents. Each unit needs a minimum of three tents, at least three meters by three meters. Um, one is for labor, one for delivery. Oh, one is for labor and delivery, and one is for postpartum recoverment recovery and one is for the team so you need three tents one for the labor one for the postpartum and one for the team and then these are things I added okay I added these because I like a more natural approach or I like a very natural approach so here's some things that we collect for our large biosustainable what I call them our birth pods for sheaves which is um, safe haven emergency villages okay uh, so charcoal, diatomaceous earth, chlorella, electrolyte powder, arnica remedy, castor oil, clair these are essential oils, clary sage, white fir, peppermint, ginger, tea tree. I would say lavender as well to add in. Um, herbs so that I don't go through the different herbs. So I just put herbs, but there would be herbs for hemorrhage mostly. Um, and I go through those in other videos. I go through a detailed uh, thing about that. I wanted to show you some of my roses today. I might do that. I might take you in my other room and show them to you. I've been gathering a lot of plants, not just roses, but a bunch of them. Okay. Let's keep going. We might save that for another day since we're getting all, all already up to almost an hour. Okay, we'll keep going here. If we have a little time at the end, I'll take you in and show you what I've been collecting from my wild crafting. Okay. Um, so magnesium chloride flakes, spray bottles, 
baking soda, powdered citric acid, Epsom salts, rescue remedy, plus, okay, these are the tinctures. Rescue remedy, placenta release, anti-hemorrhage, lobelia, 180 proof vodka, amber bottles, and then here's some cleaning supplies, bleach, peroxide, vinegar, rubbing alcohol, oxyclean, scrub brushes, rags, plastic garbage bags, dish gloves times five go in each pack because you can reuse them. Soap, fells, nafta times one, pool shock powder. And I'm going to finish page one and then we'll go on page two next time. I'll do page two. Extras, journal, notepads, pens and pencils, masking tape, scissors, Sharpies, ink pads, two to four. Okay, and we will go through the second half of that list on our next class. I just want to see if I've missed anything with the breastfeeding. I have a few um, tips in here to successful breastfeeding. I'm just going to go over them. These are from uh, Elizabeth Davies. Fifth edition of Heart and Hands, A Midwife's Guide to Pregnancy and Birth, one of my favorite manuals. So let's see here. Have a written breastfeeding policy that is routinely communicated with all healthcare staff. That's number one. Two, train all healthcare staff in skills necessary to implement this policy. Three, inform all pregnant women. So this is how to have successful breastfeeding, not just for parents. It looks like it's it's excerpt, excerpt from the, the WHO statement, the World Health Organization. Three, inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. Four, help mothers initiate breastfeeding within a half hour of the birth. I think that that is important and you need to be loose around letting really just more creating the space so that the mother has the environment the hormonal cocktails pumping there's no interruptions and the baby's not being forced onto the nipple the baby can pat and bob their head and lick and until they get then when they get it on their own, then it's imprinted in their brain and all that licking and sucking and patting and everything that they're doing is helping the mom to clamp down and stop bleeding and helping the baby to bond and imprint with the mother and the mother to bond and imprint with the baby. It's creating hormones both ways. So really important to have an uninterrupted breastfeeding time where there's no phone calls, there's no talking to your clients ahead of time if you are a midwife. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm just going to pick up my little stick. If you are a practicing midwife, have a really clear discussion with your clients. That's come up in some of my um, groups that I'm on where midwives, you know, there's just too much going on after the birth and it's actually affecting the outcome of the of the birth. And it could even be during the labor or during the immediate postpartum, but you want to keep the energy down, keep the room quiet, keep, no, it, it needs to be like an animal. How would an unconsciously, if there's too much noise and activity or stress or anything, it's going to affect the mother's hormonal cocktail. So keep the energy peaceful, supported, loving, and calm. Okay. Now here's number four. Yes. Help mothers initiate breastfeeding within the first half hour. Show mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation if they should be separated from their infants, how to pump their breasts. Yes. Sometimes babies do need to go in to certain situations where the mother cannot breastfeed them. And so to keep your milk and store it and try to feed it to the baby, hopefully you can Make sure your baby's getting breast milk if they are able to take it in. Give newborn infants no food or drink other than breast milk unless medically indicated. Yes. Number seven, practice rooming in. Allow mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day. Yes, of course, with home births and birth center births, we always do that. But in the hospital setting, Yes, you can advocate for that as, as a care provider or as a consumer of the 
medical system if you are entering those doors of the hospital, which keep in mind when you do enter those doors, you turn over your sovereign authority to the people who run that company and to the institution. There's nothing you can do about it. You can advocate all day long, get a doula, all that. And yeah, it can help, but it, it's not the same as birthing in your own space, which is actually safer according to all research worldwide. It's safer to birth out of hospital. Hospital has a much higher infection rate than home birth, and they have the same outcomes according to research, all studies worldwide. There's, there's just no getting around it. <laughs> Our system has screwed things up bad here. We have one of the worst maternal and newborn infant and mortality, uh, newborn and maternal infant, I'm sorry, newborn and maternal morbidity and mortality rates in the entire civilized world. We are the worst and we spend the most on it. So we know it was a false paradigm. It's a false paradigm that takes power away from women when they are in their most vulnerable positions, creates tons of trauma for mothers and tons of trauma for their children. This system has to, is going to go down, I know, because it's not respectful. The doctors have their, you know, training to think that they can change birth and control birth, but birth isn't made to be controlled. It's made to be supported and encouraged and guarded. And so we're gatekeepers of birth and I take it very seriously that I am a gatekeeper. I hope you can be a gatekeeper too of your own birth and of other people's births to come in the future because it's a very vulnerable position for a mom to be in, especially if she's homeless, you know, especially if she doesn't have a place to live or a place to birth. So I hope we can have charity in our hearts and not be as, I just find people online absolutely heartless towards anybody that doesn't believe in the exact same religion they believe in. <laughs> It's not Jesus's way. I'm sorry. All the people who are shunning others for their faith are going to have to repent or they won't enter into the kingdom of God because it's a whole love thing. It's love. God looks on the heart of the person. So learn to look on the heart. Not judge a person by their belief system that might differ from yours that you think is all perfect and right. <laughs> Let's face it. Okay. I sure I'm changing that in my own self, being less judgmental, more inclusive of those who are not necessarily of my exact belief system, but you know, trying to understand them and realize that they're going to need help too. Uh, we're going to help everybody. We're not going to be discriminating against people. Okay. Encourage breastfeeding on demand. Number nine, give no artificial teats. Oh my goodness, get rid of the pacifiers. Or pacifiers, also called dummies or soothers. That's what we call them in Canada, soothers to breastfeeding infants. Do not give fake nipples to babies. They're bad for their breastfeeding, they're bad for their mouths, they're bad for their jaws, they're bad for their teeth. They're kind of a... Um, they're just not good for them, period. And I, I was going to say lazy man's way of taking care of a baby's needs is to just stuff it in their mouth. Like that. I'm not saying you wouldn't breastfeed for emotional needs sometimes. Absolutely. I think breastfeeding is, you don't need a soother. Um, foster and establish, foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups. Yes. We have a circle every week here in Rexburg. If you want to join us, we do breastfeeding support groups. We've done them now for five years. Faylene Elias, you can look her up on Facebook. She schedules them. We usually do them here or we do them out in the community somewhere. And they're on various days, usually during the midweek. Um, but yeah, help mothers get into support groups. Okay, that's the list came from heart and hands. Yay, we're getting down our list. I think I've done everything. Okay, I've got a little chart I want to show you about the balancing of 
all the different aspects of us. There's more than this, but this is just one depiction of how important it is for the holistic view of the mother, not just to look only at her physical needs, to look at the spiritual awareness, the mental awareness, the emotional awareness, and the physical awareness. And then their, their enlightenment is when you have all of that in a balance, then you have enlightenment. Okay, we did it. I want to show you a couple pictures just for fun. Like this one is of a beautiful woman that I really love, her Liliana. She's in Hawaii, pregnant on the beach. I think being around water um, is really healthy in pregnancy and birth. This is about early labor. And early labor, it can be slow and steady, or it can start and stop. Or it could take a long time, or it could be fast and quick. And so, you know, just be okay with whatever it is. I think not having too much expectations in labor and trusting the outcome will be what it's meant to be, you know. Okay, let's see if I can show you one or two more pictures, and then I'm going to say goodbye. Some of these I've already shown you, so... Well, here's a nice picture of Robin Lim, who I just talked about from Boomi Sea Hut Clinic. She does great work. She gave me that list. I'm so grateful to her for that. Um, let's see. I've got some color pictures here, actually, today. So prioritizing mom and baby for food. Here's a nice nutritious meal, lots of veggies, some protein. Prioritizing mom's food. Having emergency birthing supplies is really good. I think it's really important. Um, this is from a birth um, of one of the midwives, actually, Angela works with Generations Home Birth. This is her in her labor. She gave me these pictures. Her little girl's in the tub there with her. And then um, let's see if we've got one of the actual. Here she is delivering her own baby. She's catching her own baby there. She's got her eyes closed. All her kids are around. There she just pulled her baby right out of herself there. No problem. Midwives are there helping her. Yeah, it's a really nice moment there. Nice moments. Okay, before we finish up, I'm taking you for a walk. We're almost at, we're at one hour. Perfect. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm going to take a little drink. Oh, I'm doing good my room I kind of redid it a bit cleaned it up and stuff that's my my uh, safe haven emergency villages logo okay here we go this is my house which I think you've seen my house before and uh, we're gonna walk down here I'm going to let you just sit. I'm going to let you sit, right? Where are you going to sit? I'm going to open it down here. Maybe you sit down here. Just sit there for one minute. And I'll get my herbs that I've been collecting. Okay, here we are. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you some of my herbs. Bring you over here. This is kind of my, my summer harvest. I've done things with them too, though. Like I've made salves, I've made oils, I've... Um, Done, I've made vaginal or vulval steam mixtures with them. So, okay, this is peonies. Peonies are very medicinal. There's a few roses mixed in, 
but it's mostly white peonies and pink peonies. They're highly medicinal. You can use them in teas. You can use them in steams. You can use them in uh, salves. Okay. Now this is prickly wild lettuce, which is absolutely everywhere. If my whole yard is full of prickly wild lettuce. Anyway, it's good. It's an analgesic. You can make tea. And then, of course, my roses. They're everywhere. I have a lot of wild rose bushes in my yard, so I have a lot of those. And then I went to the river, picked arnica. So I have my arnica and my, this is just a little bit, but the red clover. It's very good for the blood. You can have, drink it during pregnancy. Let's see if I have. And then the mullen. Got a bunch of new mullen. Antiviral. Let's see if there's anything else besides those. I think that's it. So it's been a good um, chance to see you again. I hope you're well. Bless your day. Bless your Sabbath, if this is your Sabbath. Um, and I hope that uh, you're able to learn from the things that I've shared and that you're able to perhaps, you know, get my manual and my book and get some people together. This is where I do my Pilates in here. And I really enjoy it. Okay. Well, we're done. It's been nice to see you again. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to relax now the rest of my day. And it's been nice to see you again. Um, I don't think I had anybody on today except for people came on and off. Maybe they weren't interested. And that's okay. If you're interested and you have time to watch this, then you're the one to watch it. And bless your day. And I hope you're well. And leave me a comment down below on if there's anything else you want to learn or well, how you felt about what you learned today. All right. Or if you have any questions, All right? Take care. Bye-bye now.